You know my story. I went from ESL English teacher teaching kids to becoming a senior developer without a CS degree past the age of 30. I've scratched and clawed from eating one ramen a day to starting multiple startups and becoming a tech lead for a social media app that was going to have hundreds of thousands of users. In this video, I'm going to tell you my story through the code I've written in just 17 minutes by reviewing my GitHub and my GitLab and all the code in my repositories that are uh, left over. So if you find this video useful to you, please share and like this video and comment code seven to let me know you've watched it all the way to the end. You know, I've done plenty of projects and um, GitHub, it got popular. I, I started using GitHub a lot in 20. 21 or 2021 or 2020 because the uh making the teams became a feature of github but before it was easier to use um gitlab and that's what they're teaching at the uh, place i was learning so let me show you what's left over in that repository it's kind of cool to have all this experience and look through all this code anyways well one of the first projects that i did was uh this capel website it was, um, I got this project through the bootcamp I went to, and when we finished, we had a project score. So I finished uh, this Cat Bell project that um, they offered to the students and me. So they actually got invested as well, but they didn't hire any of us. But uh, anyways, they there's uh, in Korea, like all the data is in online. So we basically uh, aggregated that data and put it into databases so people can like search the bills that are getting passed soon and stuff like that so that was a cool project and we learned php at the time so i learned about like sessions and logging in i made the whole authentication system from scratch and i'll show you that kind of stuff but um i don't think i have the code base for that and i'm not allowed to show that anyways actually one of my first projects was maybe reservey it was a tattoo reservation software this is the code left over so I'll show you here. This is called Reservey Tat. This is the first time I've opened GitHub, uh, GitLab in like a long time. So it's just a bunch of PHP code. It's a bunch of um, CSS and PHP and making reservations and injecting some PHP into the HTML and JavaScript and making the artist form. Oof, this is a lot of code and a lot of forms, but just a bunch of uh, check marks and labels and forms to register tattoo artists. And then later on, like confirm registration. So the APIs are here, like confirm reservation. Uh, here's just some raw SQL queries. I remember in PHP, it's kind of like SQL params. You set your SP, uh, SQL, you, you prepare your SQL at, with your data connection. So that data connection's coming from the lib, probably. I really don't remember. Um, resources, ReserveCon, there's the uh, connection. The DataCon, new PDO, with, I was using MySQL. Basically, logging in, it uses the ReserveCon, and then prepares the SQL query, and then it executes it. And it was uh, it was pretty fun. It was uh, interesting. And then uh, the biggest part of it was um, actually making the reservation. So uh, request reservation, and just a bunch of SQL queries and I don't even remember SQL anymore. So this was one of the first projects I did. Um, let me see if I can find, oh, there it is, Reservey Tattoo. Uh, okay, here it is. Here's the uh, design for it. You could like look at the tattoos. You can see where they are. You can see their artwork. You can see their tattoos. I think you have to click on it in the right spot. Mr. LOL, styles. Basically, you press here, you press here. You can go to the tattoo and then you can go make an appointment and then you could choose a time and you could send a request and you could uh, reserve a tattoo spot. I thought it was um, a good idea and uh, the startup got selected. So we're kind of just, I was just creating the prototype and everything. You know, you're, for that kind of thing, you're gonna need to get the t available times. So you're gonna have to request the reservation. Then it has to be a request. Then it has to uh, get the reservation and all this kind of stuff. I thought it was pretty interesting. It was fun. And that was my first big project, I guess. So that was that. Let's just look through this and let's do some other stuff. Uh, from there, mm, there was some like real estate stuff. So let me go here. I think this is one. This just has a uh, front end stuff in it, so I think I can go through it. Here's the state, here's the stores, here's the getters, mutations. So I was using view here with um, state, so I had to have a bunch of state to kind of show what I need to show and all this kind of stuff. So I thought it was interesting and it would make a lot of, uh, I think I put everything in the actions. So I used something called the event bus, which would let me talk to the components with data everywhere and uh, set the tokens and everything to get the data and the mutations would change the state that's the pattern i was going with and it was fun and um it would have like components i would have my um statistics card statistics card line i was using chart js and it was just uh it was a fun time in my life and we built that front end like many times so i have a bunch maybe i have even more like this one there's like a bunch 
So like basically in my the beginning of my career, I had like the real estate stuff and then I had reservey. So those were kind of like two things I had. And then here I have like small stuff, other stuff like K beauty project that I did, K brand cosmetics. I don't even know if this is still alive, but let's see. K brand cosmetics. Oh, here website still alive oh shit i made this that's crazy anyways yeah that's another website i did a long time ago and oh i didn't know this would still be alive but okay that's uh something i made as well now i'm moving my career into github i guess github.com and so i did a whole bunch of stuff in gitlab i like that's not all this stuff but i did a lot more and then if i just look in my repositories there's a bunch of stuff in teams that i don't want to show you guys or i'm not allowed to show you guys right now so i'll just show you guys what's in my repository so as you can see i started using github from i mean i think like 2020 and my activity has always been pretty high so i'll just show you guys and if you guys have github i mean one thing i used to look at a lot is like activity anyways of like people if they actually code so you guys should just like fill this up as much as you can oh 2021 is when i started using it. okay so started using github in 2021 and at the end of 2021 and i was using gitlab every like before then so um the next project from the reservation software to uh real estate uh, i think it was the journaling software and i have i have uh, shown you guys that before uh, i think that's on my computer so this was in react native and uh here i got to kind of use like web rtc and like a whole bunch of things i've never been exposed to before that really uh showed me how like a website should work here I, I experienced maybe like social login, using Firebase and all this kind of stuff, using SDKs and it was really interesting just making everything and then figuring out there's like secret, like uh, APIs like um, Dream Security where they like have an ID for everyone to like index all of them and uh, it was fun and I had a good time making all this stuff like there's personality tests and uh, journaling and all this kind of stuff and it was interesting and it was fun to kind of write and uh, work in a team and next after there i um i refactored that whole thing and the, where i learned a lot uh, you guys can watch that video it's uh i refactored that whole app into a more usable like reusable kind of app made it very modular and um i could turn on and off the features and it was uh, very interesting and then from there i hopped into a different company and it was um a kickboard company let me see if i can kind of like find some code from there i think i i'm missing a couple of things but here's a kickboard cron just one i can just show you guys like a piece of the code let me see here cron.kickboard cron.kick so this is like a cron job for a kickboard service so there are many things you have to kind of check here um this uses a uh, cron mixin, low dash, moment, and uh, you know, on tick, we have to find the kickboards. We have to check which ones are out of the area. So, out of area is created. Kickboards check for user not deactive. So, if someone forgot to turn it off, kickboards checker for faulty segue. So, segue was the network we we're using. Kickboard checker for speed change. So, that's checking the speeds. Uh, kickboard checker for speed back to normal because uh, if they sped too fast, the kickboard would automatically uh, go slower. Kickboard checker for low batteries. You have to check uh, all the ones that you have uh, for low batteries and then um, mark them. Uh, kickboards for delayed status updates and just a bunch of crons that you always have to run for these IOT projects and I thought it was really interesting create all these and there it was um I built a lot of projects like I got my hands I got to be able to work on um blockchain projects so I'll just reopen my github here blockchain bitcoin service I was using like uh I think these were just two services I I made just to um create wallets and addresses they're uh, interesting and then uh testing transfers and testing um ethereum but create wallet was working perfectly balance test and all this kind of stuff sure you should uh I, like later on i wrote like my own smart contracts i can show you some projects there too this one it was um don't have my github but i don't think this project's running anymore so it's okay so this was um, artifacts. So artifacts are uh, the ABIs that are built out from the uh, hard hat, the, like the ERC, the, the contracts to kind of run and all this kind of stuff. So here are the contracts. Um, this one's just using from Open Zeppelin, some kind of stuff. Uh, this is how you call and interact with the contracts. There's a solidity code, so it's just um, standing on ERC 721. 721, I think, is an NFT contract. And just a bunch of stuff here. There's some payment endpoints, just some cool stuff, like SMS service to kind of uh, send text messages and all that kind of stuff, OTP service, cron crypto prices to like scrape the prices from Bitcoin for Bitcoin, Ethereum, Tether, and Clayton to kind of like show real-time updates 
for those, and just a bunch of other ones, like just user service, what kind of data we needed. And then um, the front end was built in Flutter, and we're using Flutter, Build Runner, just making all these UI and like create NFT screen and the children, components, and all this kind of stuff. And I think we're using MobX in here. It was really fun, and this is the MobX. And it, like it had a lot of auto-generation code, so you just run the, gener uh, the Build Runner and make these .g files. So make the code clean and faster and uh, usable and the route was auto-generated too. I think it was really interesting to learn like me coming from like PHP to like Vue.js to like now like React Native to now like um, uh, Flutter and then like in the back end using like what things like Node.js and Python. But like the whole time almost basically we're using Node.js for the back end, right? Or I guess PHP. And um, here I was learning a lot about that and like Docker and um, Docker was really interesting for me. I'm running like microservices and learning how to uh, manage that kind of stuff. So I learned a lot and it was uh, really interesting. So I was learning blockchain projects and then from there I was um, learning a lot. I was like I was like on this mission to learn everything I could, just soaking everything in. And um, and then I had some kind of um, interview with some uh, teaching software during COVID to like share screens. So I think I was studying that a lot. So I think this is just a practice one that I was doing, but um, here I was doing some stuff here. It's called a the repository is called like video screen share or something. So here there's some socket handling stuff from the server. Uh, you could say like where I was like um, taking the video and I was uh, getting the image and I was putting it on a canvas and then I was sending it base 64 through the socket so you could actually see it on the other side. So it's not really, it wasn't really a web RTC thing. It was sending like base 64 images so other people can see the screen in real time. And I thought this was pretty interesting and really fun uh, using like video track and all this kind of stuff. And then I actually uh, got to help out on a cool job for uh, Seoul National University and um, making some student teacher software. And I thought that was really interesting. It was like a build up, honestly, because I was like working on the WebRTC stuff on the journaling software or a company and then I got to work on this screen sharing software after this screen because this was a the screen sharing thing was just a temporary job uh, and then from there with the blockchain stuff I got to work on like um, some kind of other blockchain project I can't show it but it's um live gram live ah crap to be honest I don't remember let me see if I can find it in my in my code uh, live culture lab there we go live culture lab and like what's this one they have some articles about it lcl yeah, yeah, yeah so they released their own coin and i always helped to like uh i needed to like hook up some like blockchain stuff for there checking the balance and all this kind of stuff but i don't know what happened to them to be honest because i only worked there for a couple months on a contract basis but i was using the um the experiences that i've learned before and i was kind of picking up these projects and uh getting them done and it was pretty good it was fun then from there did other couple projects one of the other big projects i got put on to was um like a crypto lottery website i did that one it's called like crypto ishtar where people could like select a number and buy a number nft as a number and then people could win something uh and then other ones i helped out on a, on a bnpl buy now pay later app that i think it ran out of investment before it released and then like uh the most recent one that was huge was um you know guys ever know like uh the first video i ever posted i got laid off from but um this was a pretty big app we had um this one we had a bunch of features in here oh and i did make that uh alcohol selling app too that's deployed somewhere so there's like a bunch of gestures that we're using double tap and these utilities for app storage bunch of stuff so let me just go here we had a bunch of uh stores with zeus and a bunch of helper functions like get property by dot notation just a whole bunch of helpers and let me see here like a lot of things and a lot of things here were like um kind of like a used marketplace with like a community and comments and people could sell stuff and little other brand markets that were going to be incorporated into there the project was huge and it i mean we only worked on it for 15 months but i feel like the project was so big it should have been you know it we needed more time but um it was harder it was like i think i went into it thinking it was going to be smaller but they kept on wanting more and more and more and then in the end just um it got out of hand a little bit but um yeah i mean we we added features like we made a markdown thing a markdown markdown or, or publish uh packages draggable vertical flat list design system content editor that's what we called it all right so we have uh index here that's a bunch of stuff content editor where uh you could actually like put an item and then drag it up and down and kind of edit edit it on the phone to like make a pretty little like post for the community and 
It was just a bunch of code. It was really hard to get it smooth and put like a text input and inside of there, it just did a bunch of stuff. So I um, I had a lot of fun with it and it was it was uh, it was interesting. So that was the front end. And then I think, here, let me close this up too. And then the back end is around here somewhere. This is the back end. So there's a lot of back end stuff too. Like um, I just opened an example file up here. Community post factory where we're creating you know the community post structure um get community posts my aggregations to kind of match the collections like a join and mongo and uh it was just a lot of work man it was it was really hard and it was really fun there's a lot of chatting there was um finding users matching them there's a bunch of things and i think it was uh interesting and uh that was like the last big project i was really working on now recently i'm working on um chatbots so um that's what i'm doing with my time recently so let's think that i went from let's say uh php and then uh, vue.js and python to react native and node.js and then from there i went to react native and serverless and then from there i went to um, Flutter and Node.js and then I went back to React Native and Node.js and that was kind of like my whole timeline of like the languages I was using and in between there I was like using some other stuff as well but um yeah that's uh that's about it for the code my last seven years have been a hell of a ride and it's not over yet I've met so many amazing people and gained tremendous skills now I'm here to give back to the community and raise up more developers the way I did if you made it this far into the video and you are interested in programming, please come to the Discord. Me and other like-minded programmers are there to guide others to start their coding career. Remember, if I can do it, you can do it too. Coding saves lives.